I think that what COVID has highlighted really in society is just how many people weren't able to breathe anyway. Um, so our racial minorities cannot breathe, our NHS cannot breathe, those in inner cities suffering with air pollution cannot breathe, our planet cannot breathe, those in po poverty cannot breathe. Um, and so it's really, really fitting that this is a respiratory condition, it's a respiratory illness. Um, and from, if you're looking at this from a religious point of view, then it's really important to remember that the words spirit means breath. And so what we're talking about with all of the with society and all these different parts of society that cannot breathe is you're talking about a kind of spiritual suffocation. Um, and so I would say that part of the role of churches would be to try and help and allow these people to breathe in the same way that our NHS is trying is allowing people to breathe in a more literal sense that churches should be doing that in a in a more spiritual sense um and so i think now is the time to have start having bigger ideas we know that when society shuts down for different reasons then historically this is when radical steps are taken you know it is post-war that we've got the nhs for example um and that's why i think now we're seeing conversations happening that couldn't have ever really happened uh, maybe even a year ago, conversations about um, universal basic income, conversations about uh, the abolition of the police. I'm not saying that these are, so are the solutions, but it's certainly the right time to be calling into question always and seeing if there's, um, there's better ways to go about things. Um, remembering that revolutions normally like bring us back to where we started because that's what revolve means. But um, inside the words emergency is emerge and good things can come out of this um, even if we can't really look at it as an opportunity because of all the uh, the horrific things that have happened as a result. Um, for me looking at this from a, a creative uh, point of view, an artistic point of view, um, I've, I'm thinking about how this was originally seen as a kind of dystopian uh, alternative reality, like we're entering this almost end of the world. But what we've seen within that is pockets of utopia, pockets of good growing up. Um, and as a creative person working with uh, charities dealing with poverty and movements dealing with climate change, what I'm looking at is trying to preserve these pockets of utopia, um, which to me is often grassroots, grassroots community action, um, people loving their neighbors more, uh, people reevaluating things that are important to them. Um, and trying to preserve those, fossilize those in some kind of way. Um, and yeah, trying to remember that if we're trying to build back better, the building blocks to do that are being created today. Um, and so trying to preserve those. Um, so I guess, yeah, um, there was a, a workshop that I did earlier on uh, in the pandemic and someone wrote this poem and there was just a couple of lines that really stuck with me. Um, and they said, when we emerge once again, instead of going back to normal, may we go ahead remembering what we missed and what we didn't. And those lines I just thought were very powerful. And that's what I kind of, that's the, the mentality that I've tried to go forward with throughout this pandemic and that I'd like to go forward with after it.